you have to keep telling people these things. Now, one of the things that I think um, one needs to look at is the fact that as part of Brexit, we have seen a tremendous amount of anti-Semitism. Now, when I first came to this country in the 60s, we had quite a lot of that. We had a group led by Max Mosley called the Black Shirts. And I, used, I taught in the East End, the school that you see Michelle Obama talking to the children now called Mulberry was Tor Hamlet's girls' school. It was the first comprehensive girls' school. They took four secondary moderns and divided them up into two single sect comprehensive. The boys are called Trinity and the girls were called Tower Hamlets and now Mulberry. And the bulk of my children came, at least one class came from a Cable Street primary school. Now, Mosley was marching through all those areas during that period of the 60s. And I don't know if you saw recently on the television in the way in which the police had to withhold or with, um, the, the black shirts and disperse them because the Jewish people in that area were determined that they would not allow them to pass. Now, the rise of anti-Semitism again is a, something that needs to worry us. And although we have legislation, we have changes in education. We have the BBC where um, I was a governor for eight years, changing. I was appointed in February 1981. And by this time in October 1981, I had Moira Stewart reading the news on the screen. Now that wasn't done by magic. I went around. Whenever I take a public job, I inform myself, I do my homework. I went around visiting various sections. Now, Radio 2 is not a station that I listen to. I listen to three and four. But that was my own problem. She was reading the news on Radio 2 and had been there for a long time. So the next board meeting, I went and said, let me have the next set of um, vacancies for news readers. I'd like you to let me know before so that I can encourage a large number of ethnic journalists to apply. I said that we met fortnightly. And the next governor's meeting, which was the following two weeks ahead Thursday, the head of television greeted me with great enthusiasm. Jocelyn, I've got good news for you. Yeah. Um, Moira is going to be reading the news from this weekend. Now, she was in the job. She was a news reader, but they never thought of making her face public. And if you listen to Moira on Radio 2, you wouldn't know she was black. You had to see her to know she was black. Now, everybody started to say, well, you've worked miracles. I didn't work a miracle. I just looked at the institution and said, we have got to make changes. And I'm not only an advocate of race equality, I'm an advocate of female equality as well. And one of the things I did as a governor was to make sure that women were not plateauing, that they were able to get top jobs and break through the glass ceiling that was there. So that if you take a public job, if you're in a place where you can make change, make sure you do it. So now if you look at the BBC, you will see, and not just the BBC, all the stations now have representations of the society as it really is. But we've still got a long way to go. In spite of the fact that in the 80s we got four MPs, I only got five minutes, so I've got to tell you a lot in five minutes. Um, we now have a, large, a much larger number. We've got Sadiq Khan who is the first ethnic mayor of the city of London, in addition to which, in spite of all the Islamophobia, he's a Muslim and a practicing Muslim. So that we're making progress, but it's progress that is slow. And when I started my campaigns, we didn't have high court judges. 
we didn't have diplomats that were women or black, and senior officers in the police weren't black, and we didn't have any large firm that had taken blacks to the top. All that happened between 1968 and 2002. What has happened since then is that we've had a series of incidents that have prevented us from actually making the sort of progress and living without the um, constant racial discrimination that we suffered. There isn't the racial conflict and tension that we used to find in either schools or housing, but we did have problems there before which have now changed. And it is something that we need to make sure that we remain conscious of. The 1968 and 71 Acts gave us great improvement and things improved a great deal. We are here in the presence of people who have made breakthroughs to the tops of their profession. We have black judges now, but we still need to do a great deal. We need not necessarily to have a campaign, but we need people to be aware and to take action when they feel they're suffering from discrimination. I always say, if people, you're walking down the street and somebody tells you go home, you could ignore that. If they invade your space to tell you that up in your face, that's something to take action and report to the police. So you have to take a, a, a pragmatic view of when it is necessary to take action. So that if you're in a job and you feel that other people are promoted over you, you need to say, well, what, are, what particularly if you'd apply for the promotion, you need to ask your employer very politely what are the skills that I need to build upon? Where are my deficiencies? I want a feedback so that the next time I apply, I will be sure that I have met all the deficiencies that you have put. I have a great deal more to tell you, but I am sticking to my brief. So what I'm saying to you is that we have to continue demanding change, and we have also as individuals and as groups to be part of the change process. We can't leave it to our neighbors. It is every one of us as, has that responsibility to ensure that the change that we have achieved, we not only maintain, but we carry on further. And the present situation with Brexit, we need to be very conscious of and we need to make sure that the government and other leaders of the society take that into consideration. So my final word to you is, each and every one of us has to regard ourselves as agents of social change. You don't have to have a big campaign. You don't have to be dramatic and loud-mouthed about it. But you do have in your own quiet ways, wherever you are, to ensure that you are getting and encouraging and supporting change. Thank you.